Okay, first of all, guys, I don't know why y'all posing like it's a picture. This is a video. video. <laughs> Jesus Christ, cut! Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Nerd Watch my channel, Fishing Trips, and we back for another vlog, y'all. Check it. Got a good one today. Got a good one today. What you doing today, right now? Well, today is a special day. Today is December 15th, a.k.a. the return of flounder season. That's right. We can keep the flounder again, y'all. It's been 45 days since I tasted the flounder, okay? So today, I'm at a spot, man. I'm at a spot I haven't been to in a minute, man. I'm back at Seawood Park. Y'all, ask me why I thought it'd be a good idea to come to Seawood Park, which is probably the most popular flounder place to go to for the reopening. Bro, there's like 50, 100 cars in line waiting to get into this park. I like flounder, okay? I like flounder. I just can't turn around, so I'm stuck. So I might as well just go, okay? So I've been waiting in line for like an hour. It's finally moving. It's finally moving. Heads up, man. And um, December 15, 2021 is when I'm shooting this. Seawood Park used to open up at 6 a.m. Apparently, now they open up at 7, okay? So open up at 7. So just know that if you want to go to Seawood Park in the next couple of weeks, you need to get here like at 5 o'clock and wait in the line for damn near an hour. I digress, I digress. So what's today's goal, man? Today's goal is simple. I'm trying to catch my first 20 plus inch flounder. That's right, I can do it. If I can catch my first 20 plus inch flounder, I'm gonna bring one home. And I'm gonna do my first catch, clean, and cook stuffed flounder. But I gotta catch a 20 plus inch flounder. If it's less than 20 inches, I ain't doing no catch and cook. I'm sorry, I ain't doing it. That's too much work. Mm -mm, I ain't doing it. So, um, can I get a 20 plus inch flounder, take it to the house, try to figure out how to stuff it and flay it? I think I can do it. There we go. Enjoy the vlog, y'all. Enjoy the vlog, y'all. <laughs> Lego. Lego! interesting fact so the admission to get into Seawood Park you got to pay six dollars for parking and I believe eight dollars to fish this is FYI look at that beautiful scenery y'all beautiful scenery all right check it out man so um, what we're gonna be doing is something that you're not gonna see a lot at Seawood Park kayak fishing <laughs> kayak fishing I told Mark man I'm not trying to wade cuz I hate being a youtuber having all my electronics in the water I'm told I'm bringing my boat I'm bringing my boat. I don't care if people think I'm bougie. It is what it is. So what we're going to do is try to figure out a way to launch amongst all these rocks. It's a good probability that um, one of us is going to die today. One of us is going to die. I'm going to tell you right now, if Mark breaks his neck on any of these rocks, I got a kayak for sale. It's like it's an old town autopilot. Hit me up in the comments. $500, you can have it. You know what I'm saying? $500, you can have it. So we're going to find a place to launch and get in. Low tide is at 8. Mark is already hurrying up. Let me, let me hurry up and catch up to him. All right, so we're getting set up. Mr. MDR fishing right here. So once again, y'all, if Mark breaks his neck on his rocks, this is the kayak we got for sale. Comment below if you want it, $500. He don't need it, he gonna be dead, y'all. So once again, if he slips, breaks his neck on the neck, this is what's for sale, I told you about earlier. You can have it for 500, hit me up. Alright y'all, so we're headed to the spot. Something you really don't see at Seawood Park is kayakers. For years I've been coming to Seawood Park and every once in a while you see kayak fishermen and I always used to be like hating, you know what I'm saying? Like, they think they better than us. Cause you know, we be on the bank grinding, but I'm like, they think they better than us. But now that I got a kayak, 
I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. They're looking at us kind of funny. But it's alright though. But this is the reason I told Mark, yo bro, I'm not trying to wait. Number one, I don't have electronics in the water. I don't want to fish off the bank because the park has been open for 20 minutes and there's literally 40 people in like a 30 yard span. So we have our kayak. We get our own little privacy, take our own little ground, and see if we can get on some of these flatties. Let go. All right, y'all, so I just got to the spot. Ran to a lot of subscribers. They're already talking trash. They see I'm in the building. They worried I'm gonna catch all the fish. It's all good, though. So the cool thing about this spot, um, when you're at Seawood Park, right off the rocks, like I say, right there, all those people are fishing to the left of the pier. And all you have to do is cast about 10, to yards okay now the majority of people they're using mullet shrimp or tandem red gulp mullet shrimp gulp i think me and mark we got some artificial lures we're going to see what we're going to do and see what happened man so people are already catching and we're going to get some of these crack flounders like I, I got them call them crack flounders because only crack can get this many people out here fiending for a damn flounder bike so let's get started oh yeah my gear yeah i know what i'm doing I got my old 18 um, ultralight seven foot. Got my Van First Shimano reel, my infamous five pound braid. I'm gonna use the Bugs flat head with a blue crab. I mean, it's on there, focus for now. And we're gonna see if we can get it done. My backup plan is I got some gulp just in case. So we're in 2.7 for the water. Right here. All right, we're good, y'all. So I'm gonna kind of peep the scene. I'm in like 2.6 for the water. So like I was saying is that, um, I know I'm facing the sun. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. So when the, when you wade and get off the rocks, you're gonna feel a bunch of heavy rocks. You know, me and Mark almost broke our neck trying to, you know, land in here. The rocks is gonna go from rocks, rocks, and all of a sudden it's gonna turn into complete sand. Once you feel that sand, stop and just start working the sand. You know you're in that right area because the waders who have been fishing here before, you can kind of see them in this little cove right here. This is nothing but sand and they're trying to fish. Everybody else that's on the bank, they're just fishing about five to 10 yards from the rocks to the left of the pier. So if you don't want to wade, um, you don't have a kayak, try to get here early in these spots. So um, let me stop talking, dropping that knowledge and them hits. Let's get to work. What up? Say it again? Why are you trying to embarrass me like that in front of all these people? <laughs> you know I ain't caught nothing yet. <laughs> you ain't right. I thought we were boys. Let's go through the head. Now this pearl white with pink tail. I picked this up from a guy last year. There's a video on my channel. I can't remember what it's called, but the thumbnail is like a Caucasian male holding a flounder. Bro, he caught a 25 inch flounder here on this exact goal. So, we got our tandem rig, and um, I'm ready to catch some flounder. I ain't playing no more, bro. Game over, let's get it. There we go. Finally. I think we on. I think I'm on mark. Now we gotta get her in the boat. Okay. It's not a keeper. There we go. Yeah. Alright, we've got one y'all. I've been out here for Two hours, nothing. We throw the gulp on, and of course we get on. Not no coincidence. See, simple as that. But we'll check her out. Probably has to be 15 inches. She is 14, so not a keeper. 
but we got one. All right, so something I'm definitely gonna be looking to get into for 2022 is tournament fishing, man. Now, by all means, I'm not trying to do tournament fishing because I think I'm the greatest angler. I just think it's gonna be great content to do tournament. So, if you know some reputable, reputable, I can't even say it. If you know some legit tournaments, comment below about some fishing tournaments I should check out. Um, you know, I'm gonna do saltwater, preferably, and also, you know, if there's some freshwater tournaments in as well, just let me know. Comment below tournaments that I should check out because I'm gonna do them, 2022. Ah. There's a thump. Oh, there's a thump. There's a thump. There we go. Got it. There we go. We got it. Get that gas up, bro. <laughs> I got you. Oh, this might be a keeper. Get in the boat. There we go. Woo. There we go. Appreciate it, bro. Thanks. <laughs> you caught a 20? Really? Yeah, I never caught a 20. My biggest one was 19. I'm trying. You caught 25? Why not? Oh, last week. <laughs> well, if you caught a 25 last week, I caught a 32 last week too. You got it on film? Man, that's Photoshop. I can turn this into a 36 inch easy. I can show you how to edit that. You see my yesterday one? You see? Oh, how big was that? That was 20. 20? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Alright, y'all, let me show y'all the fish. Let's see if it's a keeper. Let's see if it's a keeper. Oh, there we go. There we go. 15 and three quarter. Yeah. Gotta keep her, man. Mark! Keeper! Gotta keep her! Hey bro, you want to trade for your gap top? <laughs> yeah, what's up? No, I'm good. All right, and then huh? I just basically you look inside his mouth, okay, and then where his gills are, just go straight through and then rip it out. So, let's see. Okay. And if you get his gills too, it's even better because they'll go in right here and come out. Or do you just come right here? Sorry, sorry. Yo, all right, man. So we back in Houston, back in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the catch segment of the vlog. Man, it was a jungle out there in Seawood Park, but I managed to give me a good keeper. Now I'm gonna be doing something I've never done before. I'm gonna be deboning a flounder to stuff it, okay? Now look, once again, this is the first time I'm going to attempt this, all right? The first time. I don't need y'all all up in my comments. Renil, you're not doing it right. It has holes in it. Renel, you're not doing it right. There's still bones left in it. Renel, you're not doing it right. You bleeding. I don't want to hear none of that, okay? Let me make it, okay? This is my first time trying to do the bone of flounder to do stuff flounder, okay? Sorry for yelling. But I think I can do it, man. I think I can do it. I watched a couple of YouTube videos. I feel like I'm an expert now, and um, I think I can get it done. There you go. All right, y'all. So here is the star of our show. This is my nice... 15 and three quarter flounder. I was going for it 20 inches, but beggars can't be choosers, okay? All right, so as far as the utensils, I think I'm gonna to need to debone the flounder. Got one knife to take the head off. Scale it, fillet knife, my ugly stick fillet knife. And apparently we need these to cut the bones. So yeah, so first things first is, gotta take the scales off. But I'm gonna do this in the sink because I don't want my wife getting mad at me. Be right back. 
All right, so let me glove up. I know some of y'all are gonna be in the comments. Renee, why are you wearing gloves? Be a man. Well, the reason I'm wearing gloves, y'all, is that I don't have no camera, man, like these fancy big channels. I gotta shoot all my own shots. So in between some of these shots, I gotta deal with my camera equipment. Guess what? I want this expensive camera equipment covered in fish slime, so I'm gonna wear my gloves. I'm a grown man, I can do what I want. All right, so I got a little piece of paper towel here. Don't mind that. Just to keep the flounder from moving all around. Um, what I'm gonna do is first take the head out. I did bleed it while I was out there. So I'm curious to see if the meat looks any different. Okay. Now this is my cheap kitchen knife that isn't sharp, but I think it should get the job done to take the head off. If not, I'm just gonna have to use my bubble knife. Jesus. Oh, that's that bone right there. Mother. <laughs> All right, so we got the head off. Shout out to YouTube. I know YouTube has been scaring all the outdoor channels from doing catch and cooks because it's too graphic. So the YouTubers haven't been showing cleaning and fish. But then you have people like me. I'm a bad boy for life. I do what I want. All right. So to start the filet, what we're gonna do is get our filet knife. This is my ugly, ugly sick filet knife. As some of y'all saw before I did a review on this knife. Um, I got it at Academy 1999. Way better than my Bubba knife, to be honest with you. So, to my knowledge on my YouTube video, we need to start right there in the center. And just work our way, sorry y'all. <laughs> work our way down to the tail. Alright. There we go. Gonna have to get past that head bone. Alright, so I'm going along the spine. Let me see if my fish will stop sliding around because this paper towel is annoying my OCD. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> So just like filleting any flounder, you're gonna start working your way along that upper spine as so. It's been a while since I filleted a flounder. Y'all gotta bear with me. Okay. Protect your hands at all costs, y'all. Is it me or just that sound of a fillet knife going along a rib cage is satisfying? Does anybody else like that or that isn't me? So I'm just using my finger and my thumb, trying to conserve as much meat as possible, but I'm not gonna take the fillet off completely. As so. Hopefully these shears will be able to take the bone out. Slowly taking my time. There we go. Serving the meat. I'm washing my fingers. Go along that spine. And so. Yeah, so flounder, um, flounder used to be my favorite fish. And so that day I caught a papano at Surfside Jetty. Now papano is my favorite fish. So we got that first flap, as so. Now we'll start working on the other flap. And same concept, man. We're just going down the, the rib cage. Still gotta, you know, take the guts out too. Cross that bridge when we get to it. Here we 
go. There's the stomach. So I'm just slowly working my way. I love that sound. I gotta keep him framed, bro. Stress me out. And this one, I don't know if it's stomach or is it eggs? This might be a female. We'll check it out here momentarily. If it's raw, I might eat it. Let's check it out here. Alright. What is this, y'all? Is this roe? Or is that like a, a flounder? kidney or something or is this row let me know in the comments if i can eat this i mean i ain't eating it now but just for future reference you know i ain't got to get past that hard head bone with a gut track there we go so just remove the stomach intestines all that fun stuff Probably could use my shears to cut this through this bone, get these guts out. There we go. All right, so let me complete my fillet. Try not going through the skin. All right, so so far, ain't gonna lie, I'm kind of impressed with myself. And I have this tough part here. But what I think. Use my kitchen shears to cut that head section. Okay, it's working. There you go. So I'm cutting a little cavity where the guts were at. Get rid of that. All right, so we're good for now. All right, so we got the guts out. We got that. Now here's the hard part apparently. I have to take my fillet knife. I'm gonna go above the rib cage underneath. And kind of slowly poke it through. The meat is super translucent so you can kind of see your fillet knife. And we're just gonna fillet it from inside out. Just kind of make it go all the way to the tail. So once again, I'm like in between the bottom and the top of the rib cage in this little pocket here with my fillet knife. Once again, this is the first time I've done this. Bear with me, people. Okay. I'm just trying to separate the meat from the rib cage. Um, shout out Bef before outdoors. I'm doing his technique that I saw on his YouTube channel. All right, <clears throat> so I got that one. So same thing with this one. I'm gonna just kind of start and just kind of go in. Just work our way along that rib cage towards the tail. Protect hands at all costs. Boy, I am butchering this. I'll tell you one thing, it's way more quicker just to fillet it. Turn the knife around, go the other way. Make sure I don't cut myself. I'm trying to get the skin. All right. There we go. I'm not sure how well I did. It's still a part connected right here, but we'll get that in a second. So next, we're gonna take our shears and cut. See where my flap is here. Go in between the bottom and just start cutting the ribs off, hopefully. Oh, look at that, it's working. Okay, cut the skin off a little bit, we good. We good, you don't gotta be perfect. 
okay? <laughs> oh God. Okay, now with the spine here, I have to use my fillet knife and kind of cut around that. Sorry if you're not getting a good angle. See that? Focus. There we go. I'm just trying to cut around that spine. Go around the spine. So. And I'm pretty sure some people in the comments have a better way of doing this. Let me know. All right, so I'm going to the other side of the rib cage. And just cut along. All right, we still got one part. I'll cut this right here. Watch some fingers right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, technically, I don't think you're supposed to have all these holes in it. <laughs> so, we're gonna make it work though, baby. You don't gotta be perfect, just edible. There we go. So, that's the rib cage. It's out. And, okay. Now, you see this? This hole, I don't think the hole is supposed to be there. We're gonna ignore that, okay? Just ignore that. But, for the most part, what y'all think, man? I think I did a pretty good job for my first time. So, you got your flounder here, right? I'm gonna be able to open it up. So, what I'm gonna show you next as far as what I'm stuffing in here. Close it up. Bake it, for like what, 20 minutes, 400? I think it will be done. Now, something else is that it has some like other bones, like along here, smaller bones. Apparently, when you cook it, you can pull on this and those bones will come right out. I ain't trying to do all that. I'm just trying to complete this damn video and keep it moving. Okay. Now, let me show y'all up next what I'm gonna stuff it with. It might not be conventional. Okay, so I'm gonna be stuffing my flounder with Zamo's Cajun style smoke boudin. That's right, smoke boudin. You know what I'm saying? We're just gonna cut this up, put my stuffing for my boudin in here. I'm gonna open up my boudin, stuff it up, and throw it in the oven. Let me work on that and I'll be right back. All right, so next up, which I remember, I've never done this before. Now, what do y'all normally stuff, stuff flounder with? Like actual like stuffing, like at Thanksgiving? I'm just curious. So I've never done this before, so we're experimenting. So I'm gonna take my boot in, let's move this out the way, and we're just gonna, can y'all see that? I'm just gonna cut and butterfly it open. Like that. <laughs> oh God, this is gonna be so ghetto. We open it up. Like that. Make sure to get that skin off. I know a lot of people with boudin, they like to eat the skin. I think depending on the brand, some skin is really good. But I have never cooked it like this in the oven, so we're not gonna eat the skin. Just get our other boot in. We'll cut it up. No. Just kind of spread it open like this. Once you open it up, this falls right apart, like that. Put our trash up. All right, so, you know, the boot end is really tough, you know what I'm saying? So what I'm gonna do is, I wonder can I just crumble it up? Let's try that. Let me just try to crumble it up. Okay. For my, my stuffing. There we go. So I'm just actually crumbling it up. I right, so. Oh, wait, wait, before I do that too much though. Hold on, y'all, hold on. I just want some simple salt, some grounded pepper. Some ground pepper. 
Got a little H-E-B pink sea salt. There you go. Get my stuff in. And I'm just crumbling my boot in. Y'all, I've never done this before. I do not know if this will work. <laughs> I'm gonna be just as surprised as y'all if it works. So this is one boot in. I wanna see, one might be enough because I don't wanna overstuff it because I wanna be able to close it. Oh wow, look at that. Okay, you see that? All right, focus. So one boot in for this 15 three quarter inch flounder is good enough. I can't put two because it's gonna be too much and it won't fit. I need like a 20 incher for that. So it's gonna fold it up, Let's close it up like that. I wonder if I should get like a, like a two pick to kind of bind it together. We'll figure that out later. A little bit more salt, pepper. And that's it, man. Simple. How long did that take? 20, about 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, y'all. So um, I'm already, I wonder if I should like do something to stick this together. Like a toothpick? Could a toothpick fit in there? Hold on, y'all. All right, I'm back. Maybe I'll try a toothpick. Okay, idiot. Toothpicks can't go through thick flounder skin. So we're gonna do a couple of incisions like that. Remove my fillet knife. Remove the fillet knife. There we go. One more here. Like that. Okay, gotta use my broken toothpick. And fillet knife. Move the fillet knife. Bam. All right, so I got a couple of toothpicks in there. Y'all see that? So let's throw this in the oven for 20, 22 minutes at 400 degrees and pray. All right, y'all, so my flounder is done. I ended up doing about 22 minutes at 400 degrees, then another five minutes at 450 degrees to kind of get a good crust. And I'm gonna let y'all take a look. Let's get the money shot and you know, give it a taste. Check it out. on it man check this out man i went about 170 miles round trip stood in a line of traffic for about an hour paid for parking and the fish to get this one fish so hopefully it lives up to the hype let's get some of that first i'm gonna try it without any kind of boot in just the flounder itself just taste that flaky flounder mm. oh yeah this is good as I remember it. Mm. Oh my God. I'll tell y'all, I got about two tablespoons of butter with some garlic salt. I melted it and kind of poured it over as well. Mm. Let's try it with that boudin. Anybody ever had stuffed flounder with boudin before? Let's see what that looks like. Stuff flounder with some spicy boudin. Bro, this is it. This is it. All right, y'all, let me stop smacking because this isn't a ASMR channel. Check it out, man. If you like the video, smash the thumbs up, baby. I'm trying to get 300 thumbs up on this video, man. I'll be working out here. I'll be, I'll be working out here in these streets in this water, y'all. Um, today is December 15th. I don't know if this is gonna be the last video that I post this year. So just in case I don't see you, Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Hanukkah, happy Festivus, whatever you believe in, just happy. And I hope you have a great year, okay, y'all? Don't forget to subscribe. And you made it this far to the end of this video. Clearly you like me, so don't forget to subscribe, okay? 
It's been real, y'all. My name is Ray Dan Roy. I had a great year. 2021 has been real. 2022, we're coming back strong. 10,000 subscribers. You're about to get it. Let's go.